experience the power of uninterrupted viewing with our ad-free app One Islam TV, allowing you to connect deeply with the content. Explore the rich teachings of Islam and strengthen your faith through our regular new content. Download the One Islam TV app now. We're going to continue with the series of the proofs of prophethood of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Something that I, I believe every single Muslim living in the West specifically needs to be equipped with. Because the easiest way to dismiss Islam and the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is by accusing him of being an imposter and someone that claimed that he came with revelation from God when indeed he didn't. And if a Muslim cannot respond to that, then a Muslim fails to be the ambassador they should be for this deen. Every single one of us, when you say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, you're a caller to Allah. You don't allow anything. You're automatically someone who calls to Allah in every context that Allah puts you in. And you see things through the light of Allah. And when you say, Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah, you mean you will defend Rasulullah sallallahu with your family, with your life, with your wealth, with everything, because he's Rasulullah, he came as a conveyor of this message. So, today inshallah, we're going to go over one of the things that are proofs of his prophethood alayhi salatu wasalam. The first is his honesty, and uh, not even, we're going to make it general, just his character alayhi salatu wasalam. No one, no one can have the impeccable character of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam in the history of mankind, hands down. No one, and this is something a Muslim should believe in and comfortably say to anyone. How and why? We're going to explain today inshallah ta'ala. Number one is his honesty and his integrity and his trustworthiness alayhi salatu wasalam. So, the Rasul sallam, he became a prophet at what age? You guys know. How old was he? He was 40 years old. How many wives was he married to? One wife. Alayhi salatu wasalam. How many kids did he have? Oh, at that, by the time he became a prophet, he had his four daughters. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Okay? طيب. And then, he lived in Mecca. Mustad'af. At the age of 40, he was known as the most honest person in Mecca, the most trustworthy person in Mecca. And then he lived in Mecca oppressed for 10 years until he was how old? 50 years old. Do we have anybody here that's 50 years old? 50? Allahu Akbar. Imagine, you're 50 years old, alhamdulillah. Qadr Allah, he was standing up. You know, it wasn't set up, I swear to God. Right? <laughs> Right? So he was 50 years old, alayhi salatu wasalam, and then at the age of 50, everything that he was accused of by the haters of Islam, by the enemies of Islam, by the writers, the people who write against Islam today, and the Orientalists who wrote against Islam in history, everything that they have against him began after he's 50. Because they couldn't catch anything before he's 50. Would it make sense for someone to live 50 years known as the most noble, trustworthy, honorable man, and then after the age of 50 to become an imposter? Somebody who just claims prophethood out of nowhere? Absolutely not. And that's why even the historians who disliked in Islam and whose hate towards Islam permeates in their writing, they couldn't even comprehend how someone can live for 50 years and not show any sign, not show any sign of lying and then be accused to be a liar. Not show any sign of knowing magic or attending a magician's classes and then being accused of magic. Not showing any signs of being a lunatic or ignorant and then showing signs of ignorance at this pivotal age. 50 years old is the age of the prime, we said the Ashud is 40. 
So 50 years is the pinnacle of wisdom in somebody's life. That's when you start to absorb all the wisdom in your life. And that's why no one can come to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and accuse him of anything before that. And that's why what we see in the story, the famous story of Heraclius, when uh, Abu Sufyan ibn Harb, one of the arch enemies of the Prophet Sallallahu at that time, right, he hadn't converted to Islam at that time. Abu Sufyan went as an enemy of Islam to the Romans. Heraclius sent a messenger to find the haters of Islam from the tribe of Muhammad Sallallahu and to bring them forth to Rome at that time, which was based in Levant in present day Syria. And when he entered upon Heraclius, Heraclius asked him a few questions. He told him, was he known for lying before this? And he said, no, he never lied. And then he asked him a few other questions. He asked him, did he ever claim prophethood before this? Right? Is, does he want worldly matters? Is he asking for gain? And he kept saying, no, no. Then he said, Heraclius, he said, if he is the way you describe to me, and you're his enemy, then he will rule what's under my feet today. And then the, continua the continuation of this narration, it was a long narration. He said, and if he were here in front of me today, I would be washing his feet. Because that's a true messenger. Heraclius understood based on the prophecies in the Torah, in the, in the, in the, in the Injil, right? He knew he was coming. So, and one other thing in the, in the, so not only did his haters not have anything to hate against him in his time, alayhi salatu wasalam, but the Prophet ﷺ had so many opportunities to take advantage of that he could have used his advantage if he was a false prophet. Like the death of Ibrahim, his son alayhi salatu wasalam. Ibrahim, the son of the Prophet ﷺ, he was a baby, he was an infant, and then he passed away in the hands of the Prophet ﷺ. And on the day he passed away, the sun eclipsed. An eclipse happened. The Prophet ﷺ recognized that this is a solar eclipse and people might associate it with the death of Ibrahim, his son, if he didn't address it. So he came out to the people, he said, Oh people, oh people, gather. He gathered everyone and he told them, Oh people, oh Muslims, this sun does not eclipse to the life of anyone, birth of anyone, or death of anyone. But it is a miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It eclipses whenever Allah decrees for it to eclipse. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. That's it. And he left. He made sure to clarify it. If he was an imposter prophet, would he have taken advantage of that? Of course, because that's what fake false prophets do. But the Rasul Sallallahu came with a message and was clear. And the story of Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala anhu, they were outnumbered in the battle of Badr three to one. Imagine. More than a thousand versus 300 Samad Sahabis. And in the midst of this battle, right before this pivotal battle of Islam, Hudayf ibn al Yaman converts to Islam and he comes and he says, Ya Rasulullah, I, can, I, I came to Islam. I accept it. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu Muhammad Rasulullah. But there's one thing, Ya Rasulullah. I promise them that I won't fight with you if I left Mecca. Then the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he needed every man he can get. He needed every man he can get. He told him then fulfill your covenant and go back to Medina. Don't fight. He could have told him to break his covenant. You're fighting for Allah. No, he said, you must fulfill your covenant because he's living by the book that Allah sent down alayhi salatu wasalam. Another thing is his simplicity and humility alayhi salatu wasalam. If you look at the way he lived, there's a hadith. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he started to cry when he saw the Messenger وسلم, walking out of his house. He said, Ya Rasulullah, look at you. He said, what's wrong, Ya, ya Ibn al-Khattab? He said, your thighs, your thighs have the imprints of that rough, you know, the, 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 the palm leaves that are stuffed inside his mattress, alayhi salatu wasalam, they used to leave a mark because they're dry and they're rough. I don't know if you ever felt how dry and how rough palm leaves are, right? Like date, date, date leaves, right? So, 
he would have them on his thigh and they would leave like ridges and imprints like that are heavy, like heavy grooves in his skin. And Ibn Khattab was crying, he's like, Ya Rasulullah, look at you, why? At least put something comfortable. He's like, it's okay, I don't need it, Ibn Khattab. He said, Mali wa dunya. Well, what do I need from this dunya? I'm just here to deliver a message and leave, that's it. I don't need anything in here. I'm here to deliver anything extra is extra, right? This is the message of Rasulullah Sallallahu So he wasn't here to make money. People that accuse the Prophet Sallallahu of being a false prophet, they deny it when they see the way he lived. Because he didn't monetarily benefit at all from his message. The Prophet Sallallahu would live three moons, as Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha mentioned. Three moons would pass, and a light, a furnace would not be turned on in his house to, to cook food. Meaning no meat was cooked for three months in the house of the Prophet ﷺ. Today we're eating meat every day. Right, oh, let me get a cheeseburger. But the Rasul ﷺ, the most beloved to Allah, he had it once every three months. In a narration, he, he left at night and he was holding his stomach and walking in the streets in the middle of the night and Abu Bakr walks out and Umar walks out and they happen to me like, what, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Abu Bakr and Umar are walking next to each other and they see Rasulullah. Ya Rasulullah, what's bringing you out at night? You know, they would have thought he's Rasulullah, he's praying to Hajjud. You know, he's, he's probably reciting the whole Quran in one raka'ah. You know, you can imagine what they're thinking of the Rasul Sallallahu But he's like, you know what let me come out is what let you come out. He said, Ya Rasulullah, we came out because we're hungry. He's like, yeah, I'm hungry too. And they're all hungry. And look at this, mind you, the Rasul Sallallahu could have been the wealthiest and the richest in, Mac in Medina. He could have had everything. He could have not been hungry. But he chose to live this simplistic life, alayhi salatu wasalam, humble life. And not only that, when they were invited in to eat by one of the Ansar, they ate a small meal. And then when he ate, he said, Ya Abu Bakr, Ya Umar, he said, you see this meal? He said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. He's like, Wallah, you'll be asked about it in front of Allah on the Day of Judgment. He said, Ya Rasulullah, even this, Yani this one, there's ikhlas. Like we, we really just didn't want to die. That's why we ate, you know? It wasn't like living the luxuries of life. It wasn't getting lost in, in, in the ni'am of Allah. No, 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 it was nothing, none of that. It was simply eating to live. And he said, even this, you're going to be asked about in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah forgive us. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. He was unnoticed amongst his companions, alayhi salatu was salam. When they came in, you know, sometimes like today, what is the imam? You wear like a fancy jubba, taqiyya. When you walk in, you know, oh, that guy, he's dressed, he's going to be the imam. As he definitely has to be the imam. You can all notice it. That's it. As soon as he walks in, the Rasul was unnoticed amongst his companions. Messengers would come from all over, walk in and said, Aina Muhammad, which one of you is Muhammad? And they would have to say, Aina, Aina Muhammad. Can you imagine? Because he couldn't tell the difference. So the Rasul Sallallahu didn't, like his character is not the character of a liar. His seerah, his legacy, his biography is not that of somebody who was an imposter that lied, alayhi salatu was salam. His mercy, he was a mercy sent to mankind. He didn't take revenge from his enemies when he went to Mecca after all the persecution, after all the killing, after all the battles, after all the curses, after everything they did against Islam, he said, He said, go, Wallahi, you're free. Four months, travel, reside wherever you want. Okay? You have these four months, khalas, go. And he said, Man bayt Abu Sufyan, if you don't want to leave, if you're inside the house of Abu Sufyan, then you're safe too. Even if you don't want to leave Mecca. Imagine. This is Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He had mercy for children. He would see a child. He would see a little child crying. He'd be praying. And they would say, Rasulullah, your salah is very short. He's like, yes, I heard a child crying in the back and I didn't want to separate between him and his mother. So I just shortened my salah. Imagine, imagine you get a big imam, the biggest imam. What do you like? You like Mushari al-Affasi, right? Imagine he comes here and then he reads, leads salah with Kul A'udhu Rabbin Nas. How would you feel? Right? You feel played out. Like, man, he came all the way here with this beautiful voice and then he says, Kul Adhu Rabbin Nas. No. The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, everyone was dying to hear him. They wanted 
to, to, to listen to him all night reciting Quran, subhanAllah, his voice was beyond Mashari's because it had the heart, it had the, the wahi, it had the revelation, haqqa tilawati, the way Allah revealed it, ghaddan tariyan, kama nazal, is the way he recited it, alayhi salatu wasalam, but he would shorten it because he heard a child cry. He walked in, he walked in one day and he saw a little kid crying. Look at, look at, you know sometimes, wallahi, look, I'm a father and I'm sure many of you are parents here. Sometimes our kids whine and nag and cry and, and, and they're sad and they're just sitting in the corner, right? And, and we don't even notice it. We're so busy with work, right? We just have this little nine to five job, you know, we're doing some like IT work or some business that we're running or some, some whatever that we're doing, right? And we're just distracted from our own kids and their emotions. Rasulullah was, had 13 years or no, had 10 years, because 13 was in Mecca. In Medina, he had 10 years to establish a religion that's gonna last until the Day of Judgment. And he had 10 years to be a role model for every single type of human that's gonna walk the face of this earth until the Day of Judgment. But it didn't distract him from the emotions of a child that's sitting down. He saw a little kid that was sad. He said, Ya Abu Umair, ma balu nughayr. He said, oh Abu Umair, right? He would call him by his kunya. He said, what, what, what happened with the, the sparrow? The Nughayr is a little bird called the Nughayr, right? And this little kid played with a bird, the Prophet ﷺ automatically knew. This little kid, he lost his bird and that's why he's sad. And the Prophet ﷺ made it rhyme. Ya Aba Umair, ma balu Nughayr. Right, so the kid can be like, oh look, the Rasul ﷺ took some time out, he's rhyming with me now. Right, and he's asking about my bird. He's like, yeah, it, flew, it died, Ya Rasulullah. Don't worry, inshallah. And then he gave him some words of counsel. You see his emotional connection with everyone around him, even with the trees and with the animals, when he hugged the camel, alayhi salam, or when he hugged the tree trunk. This was how he was. He was in tune with everything. And this is why he is Rasulullah sallallahu And inshallah ta'ala, this is the beginning of a, a long series about the proofs of prophethood. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite us with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon the hawd of al-kawthar and to, for us to drink from his blessed hands a drink that will make us not be thirsty for eternity. Ameen ya rabbil alameen. If you ever wished that there was a Muslim version of YouTube or Netflix? Well, we have created one. The One Islam TV app has no adverts and is safe to browse for your peace of mind. Watch hundreds of high quality produced Islamic reminders, Quran videos, stories of the prophets, hot topic, debates, and so much more. Four to eight new videos are uploaded daily, inshallah. You can watch or listen to videos while your device is switched off. Watch videos on demand or download videos and watch offline. One Islam TV is 100% run and owned by Muslims, which means the small amount you pay for your subscription is a sadaqa jariya, continuous charity for you, as we use the funds raised to continue producing more beneficial videos and reminders, inshallah. The One Islam TV app is now available on Apple devices, Apple TV, Android devices. Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku. So you can watch on most devices and smart TVs. Download now for a free 7-day trial. May Allah reward you for supporting our work.